好，呃，大家早安。那欢迎大家来参加今天，呃，我们这边是 JVN 联合国的议程轨。好，那我们今天会有一整天都是跟这个呃 JVN 相关的一些议题哦。那我们早，我们时间从早上九点半，然后到下午四点。好，那一整天的议程。那假如大家想要看我们详细的议程，我们议程表是贴在外面吗？啊，就我们有贴在门口。那另外大家也可以看一下我们那个呃官方的网站，上面也有议程表。Okay. Good morning. Um, this <coughs> this section is for the JVN. So today we will have the full day uh, session of the JVN related topic. So um, the the session will start on nine nine thirty and until four p.m. Oh, okay. So the first topic is related to the expose. It's a JetBrains uh, framework for ORM. 那我们今天第一场议程呢，就是呃由 Rika 带来的，就是呃 The j e b r a n s Exposed。那它是一个 o r n 的 Framework。好，那我们就先掌声欢迎啊 Rika 跟我们分享。Okay, hello everyone. So today our first topic is about an introduction to j e b r a n s Exposed. Exposed is a c o l u m n b a s e d o r n Framework. So let me first introduce myself. Who am I?、Uh, I was a Backend developer in PHP back when 2012.、Um, I'm still working in PHP industry, but I think、uh, PHP is a very good language for web development. But it's good for fast development, but but has some flaws, especially bad in when you trying to develop an ASIC system because PHP has some flaws on its thread management or even process management. So I was trying to find a solution when I was when I was about to develop in an ASIC system. So I start learning Kotlin when back,、uh, when 2019. I was I first experiment about Java and GoLang and even、uh, even I try some C sharp I think. But I really don't like these languages. So when I first met Kotlin back when 2019, I was really Fascinated about the concise、uh, some features about the Kotlin. Then、uh, I had some talk in 2020. I was talk、um, in JC Conference Taiwan about the Kotlin coroutine, the the Kotlin solution to develop the async system. And in 2021, I talk in Macang. Macang is a conference back in the southern part of Tainan,、uh, in Tai southern part of Taiwan,、uh, roughly in Kaohsiung. Mostly, talking about Kotlin automation test, and in 2021, I accept the the roles about the Kotlin user group organizer in Taiwan. So, I was,、um, I I become the organizers from from now on. So, we are talking about the JetBrains expose. So, what is JetBrains expose? We first talk about it's a Kotlin. SQL framework or Kotlin ORM framework, but what is Kotlin? Then, if anyone know, Kotlin is actually a programming language developed by JetBrains. That's why we all <laughs> dress, dress, we all dress and sending out JetBrains gifts. But it's a language developed by JetBrains in twenty twenty eleven. So is you can if you know something about the computer history, programming history, you'll find that this is a relatively new languages. So it's not like Java or C or、um, what language、oh, like Perl. I personally I I prefer Perl, but Perl is a really <laughs> ancient language now. I even buy the the book from O'Reilly about Perl.、Um, it's not like these languages. They they are. Most most languages develop when when they're nineteen sixties, nineteen seventies, some some year like that. This language is developed in the twenty first century. So, why is this language can be even if when it's relatively new, but it still gain its popularity? Mostly because <coughs> at Google, I O in twenty back in twenty seventeen, Google announced that、uh, when you trying to develop apps on Android. The first case support is not Java anymore. Is the the first case support is will change to Kotlin. So Kotlin will be the official official language to Android development. So most most Android developers trying to learn Kotlin from 2017, and then it even it is a relatively new languages. It become、uh, getting more and more popularity. 
That's why, and that's also why, uh, as a Taiwan Kalin user group organizer, we can accept some uh, gifts and support from the Google user group. So, when we talk about the Kalin, we mostly will have some special features. We, I, I almost get, <coughs> I almost talked about this uh, in a previous section. Uh, the three main features we talk about Kotlin is first, it's concise, it's clean, and it's also because it's a relatively new language, it will be safe. Mostly, the, uh, mostly different from the Java's no safe, because when you're developing Java, you'll spend like, mm, I think, uh, even if you're a really experienced programmer, you'll spend about 20, 30% time to, to find out uh, if your input is null or not. So it's a, uh, there's a saying about a million dollar question because million dollar problem because when you're, <coughs> uh, because most languages is not null safe, you have to uh, personally examine the input of your function is null or not. The null, you cannot just easily uh, type check is, if it's null or not. So they say if you come, if you, accumulate all these times and all these efforts and all these errors when you forget to check a null, then you'll, you'll find out, well, you, you, we have spent so much money and so much effort on checking, even it's just a simple null question. And the last, <coughs> last but not least, we can talk about the Kotlin's compatibility. There's a lot of languages in JVM. You can, a lot of languages can run on JVM, but uh, most languages have, because it has a um, special paradigm, so it cannot really uh, co-work with the previous Java libraries. But Kotlin has tried very hard to, uh, even if, because even if it's no safe, even if its grammar is really concise, different from Java, but it has tried, so try very hard to make it compatible to, with the previous Java library. So that's why Android have chosen, mo mo this is the re most reason why Android had, have, uh, have the ability to choose Kotlin as the first, cl first class on Android development, but without uh, people have to um, abandon the previous libraries. So I have talked about a lot about safe and a lot about compatibility, but I have a little skip about the concise part. In exposed framework, the concise part, because it exposed is used, basically used on Kotlin languages, is a 100% Kotlin language-based framework. So it had uh, inherit the uh, proper, uh, inherit this uh, merit about the concise part of Kotlin. And it also is a type-safe ORM framework, uh, different from PHP. If you use PHP enough, you'll find that PHP, <laughs> when you use PHP to try to get data from the database, you you never you never know what you'll get. You may you may get a string, you may get an integer, but it really depends on the framework design and really depends on uh, the previous people who try to use its framework because it can easily change it can easily change its type uh, when it's right incorrectly. Okay, so we have talked twice about the concise part, but what is concise? If you find on the dictionary, you'll find its uh, definition about concise. Mark for brevity of an expression or statement. So uh, many people have confused concise with short. But uh, when I read about the books in Kotlin, it will tell you about that concise is definitely not just short. So it will free from all the elaborations if you know, if you really have some experience in Java, you'll find out that Java is a language full of elaborations and boilerplates and superfluous details. So, <clears throat> when I talk about concise, it's not short. What I'm talking about, this is a short code on a language called APL. It, it contains only 17 alphabets. It's very short, but can anyone tell me what this program is writing about? <laughs> it's really hard, right? Because um, even if it's really short, and it only contains, I think, you can say one variable and one constant, about one. But every alphabet 
contains its own meanings, and its meaning is very, <coughs> is very powerful. So, uh, for example, this, own, this one symbol is, in, in APL, even this one symbol can build up a list from, uh, I think this one symbol is telling me, telling the computer to build a list from one to R. And it's read from right to left, so I don't know why APL's designer designed it this way, but it's really hard to read. <laughs> so it's short, but it's hard to read. This code, maybe it will be useful in some particular reasons. For example, like when you are playing the code golf, there's a language especially designed for playing code golf. Yeah, I, th I think it's just code, code, code golf or golf lang. I, I forgot the language name. But it will be hard to use in the practical world. So and then the Kotlin, the concise, uh, I, will, I think this one will be the good example about the concise code. So anyone will try to explain this code? It's algorithm for me. You can use Chinese if you, <laughs> if you don't want to speak in English in this early this morning. Anyone? In personal experience, I found out that even if you're not familiar with Kotlin, you can, you can easily read, oh, this may be because of range, because of the, uh, our language design is a range from 2 to R. Then the filter, so if you are familiar with, in English, in, enough, <laughs> it's enough to know that it may be because of filter. So what do we filter? It filter out the numbers from the, the numbers uh, uh, fulfill the following statement. If a number will be divided by two until num, so that word until hint, hint out that you will not uh, reach the number, but will uh, reach the number minus one. So if you try to, if you try to mold it in the number from two until num, if it's, uh, you, you mod it and you get zero, then you filter out a number. So what, what do these three lines of program really doing about? Yeah, maybe a, a little bit like list of factors of R, but uh, because it filters out the numbers with composite numbers, so you will leave out the, uh, all the primes into to R. Okay. so. If you're interested in the previous, previous APL code, these two codes are actually doing the same thing. It will list out from the one to R and pipe out and, and move shift to one and pipe out to the R and trying to uh, doing the <coughs> cross factor. So you become an R, R times R list, a two-way, a two-dimensional two array. And then doing some Mm, I forgot how to. <laughs> I forgot it, how you really do. How it really goes. Then filter out all the composite number and then leave out an array of only the prime numbers. It so these two codes is actually doing the same thing. Yes. <laughs> Later. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I, um. Okay. So. Uh, my point is here is I, I spent a little time talking about the concise because short code is not always better. We want short code and readable code to become <coughs> to let our code be really useful. So how to use exposed? The exposed is uh, an ORM framework. So here is is uh, because it's uh, ORM is only a framework doing on database. So it's not like it's kind of like Hibernate, but you don't really like you when you're using uh, Java Hibernate. You have to import like the Spring Boot, and the Spring Boot will contain Hibernate, something like that. In here, we only uh, using Gradle <coughs> to import our three main composite, uh, three three main components. The export, uh, can we see it here? We import the export code core and the DAO part of the expose, and then our driver. Uh, currently, the expose only support JDBC driver. It still don't uh, accept the uh, R2DBC 
driver, the async, the async driver of Java. So it, it still have to be synchronous. Then when we include this, then we have to connect to our database. Then it's really uh, easy to uh, to connect our database. Uh, you 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 import the database part, then you write a connect. Uh, here we we use a simple <coughs> a simple example of using the JDBC H2. The H2 is just an in-memory database. Of course, you can try to connect to MySQL or try to connect to Postgres, but you just have to change your your driver and your password, uh, uh, your username, password, etc then you can connect into your database. When you connect to your database, then you will have two main, main grammar to connect it. The first is about the DSL. The DSL, we talk about the domain-specific language. So it's a language to build query. Kind of like when you are using LLR and they'll have uh, provide a query builder. You can use a specific uh, set of functions or grammar to build up your own query. Like this. First, we define an object. An object in, if you're not familiar with Kotlin, then it's kind of like the global singleton. So this global singleton, the Star Wars films, it will correspond to our one database, uh, the same name, Star Wars films. And we can read from its type, it's an uh, integer for IDs table. Uh, this grammar, this col uh, column here, is telling, telling us our defined object, our defined singleton, will inherit from the, <coughs> the previous the, 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 the class defined by the framework, the integer ID table. So you don't have to write the ex uh, in Java, you have to write like extended from something. Then this is really more <coughs> furious. And then we define only, it's a simple table. So we define only one value, one value here, the name. It's a column of string. And we define its type uh, of varchar. And it's a 50, 50 ASCII code varchar. When we define this, then we can use some functions to uh, build up our own query. So we can in insert and get ID. So we can insert uh, our first Star Wars films, The Last Jedi, then get our ID here. So we can use our ID to try to do other things, like when you try to find the next film or you try to get the previous film, etc. So it's just a functions to build up our query builders, uh, to build up our queries. So I don't really like to how to really access our da my database in query builders. My, my personal pre preferences is to use DAO, the data access objects. So as its name suggests, the data access objects just to access data with its own objects. So it's similar like OIM frameworks, like the, if you know the Java Hibernate frameworks. This way, uh, the, SS, the way it's accessed is kind of like the DSL. You have to define a singleton, an object of our table. And it's, uh, in every column, you have to define your own, your own value, values or variables. Then you design a class. You, write a, you design a class to access this object, this singleton, this global singletons, kind of like global singletons, to access it. So you can, in Kotlin, you have this concept called companion objects. It's kind of like to, uh, you define a class. When you knew any object from this class, then you will try to connect to our global objects, cities, in a way our code writes. So in here, we define a class city, a sing, uh, single form of cities, then it connects to our global objects of cities. And when we get it in, in the data here, we can define it as our I, um, integer entity class. And we connect 
all the uh, variables in the class. This this city class, then uh, all the variables connect to its name. When we try to do, when we define all these codes, when we define all these uh, class uh, structures, then we can access this, just like we're really getting a new <coughs> object. We define all our database transaction in a function called transaction. So here we don't have to write a, a parenthesis. We just write, we just write our, mm, I forgot how to say that. Okay, we just write a transaction function and put all our, uh, all our code inside. It kind of like the anonymous function. You just write in here. Then we can create, we can change its, its name, and we can even delete it. When this transaction is over, it will do all these things. It will, it will compile all these things into a create code and to really as, uh, really to connect to database and access it. So you new new out a new out a city called Moscow and try to uh, rename it to rename its name to Moscow and then delete it. So in here we have we have demo some. A simple code of how to use Expose to connect to our database. Of course, it has so much features. I cannot, and I cannot all tell them in this thirty minutes talk. It has many to one references and optional, so you can try to access a database, and but you only get part of its data outside, and it contains many to many references. This is the, my favorite part about <coughs> my favorite part about the. Exposed framework because in some, um, I I personally call them half baked fr framework. Then you have, you can you can do many to many references, but you have to do it in some obscure way. Like you have to write a particular code to do the left join right join yourself, or in some, in some uh, framework they they come they provided the many to many reference, but it's buggy. So you the <laughs> the the official document will tell you try not to use the many to many reference uh, feature on our framework. We're still fixing it. And it has parent child references and it even have eager loading. So you don't really asset your data when trying to get in the DAO. If you're, uh, if you're trying to asset your data every time you uh, trying to up operate on your data access object, then you will have a lot of queries in in behind. Then sometimes uh, when your user is not really that much, then you have uh, your your system will run correctly. But when you gain more and more users and your uh, your operations is getting more and more, then sometimes you'll find out that your query has really exploded. Then <coughs> your database will suffer a lot of queries and really trying to slow down. Okay, so our we have I think I have five minutes left. So summary. So what is Exposed Framework? Here I just uh, have a brief introduction about a Exposed Framework. is a Kotlin SQL framework, and when if you're not knowing about the Kotlin, then Kotlin is a language about concise, safe, and compatibility on Java. And the Exposed Framework is uh, because is. 100% written, written on Kotlin, so it's a concise and type safe uh, ORM framework. You don't have to worry about the uh, stuff you're getting will change its type randomly. And concise is not short. It's, it's DLL's written grammar. You can uh, write the object to, to connect to your database table, and you can as insert or join you can do your query on its query on its query functions. You will help build up your query in behind. Or you can use the data access object. You define a class, then you can access your database like just like you're trying to access on your all your objects. And if you want to know about uh, more on Kotlin, then is this is our Kotlin user group. Uh, I put a QR code here. I think it's way way bigger than I expected. <laughs> so if you want to know about more about Kotlin, you're trying to join the Taiwan Kotlin user group. This is our 
official webbook fan page, so you can try to connect to us. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? I think we have some time about the questions. No? Oh. Can we can we have the parent child relation? Yeah. Um the parent child relation is kind of like the sorry. Oh the parent child relation is kind of like the one to one relation. Right, because in database we have the one uh, A and B one to one. But in parent child we can define its relations more precisely. So kind of like uh, when I'm a user, um, maybe I, I have only one, I have only uh, like one introduction about the users, but it's uh, another object. So I can, of course, the, the user's introduction cannot, can, cannot exist without the user exists, right? So it's kind of like the parent and child relation. So it's a one-on-one -on -one relation. Okay. Any questions? Okay, I think we are done today here. Okay, I draw and say on black. Hey, 那我们谢谢今天 Rika 的演讲。那我们先休息十分钟。那下一场演讲大概会在十点十分的时候开始。